Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. And uh, I just parked my car. Um, I'm here on the Forest Service Road in Pisgah National Forest, actually in the Pisgah Game Lands as well. So this is a Poda twofer. But the reason I'm exactly where I am right now is because it's also a soda summit. This is Dogback Mountain, which I'm used to activating in the wintertime. And I'm not used to seeing like just how thick the foliage is up here. So I hope there's a path for me to go up because I'm just wearing my regular like street shoes today. I uh, didn't plan to do this at all. If I had planned, I'd have brought my hiking boots and some other stuff with me. It's not a hike at all. It's just a little walk. It's a stroll to get up to the top of the summit. In fact, it's basically um, a drive up summit. Um, a drive up summit. Uh, Frankly, that has some just fantastic views. I think some of the very best views here in this part of Western North Carolina. In fact, we're coming up here to a little clearing. This is another place where you can park as well. And just look at this, it's so beautiful. I love this spot, love it. It is gorgeous. People have left trash here, I hate to see. Isn't this something else? There's a little extra haze in the air today. We're still getting some of the smoke from the fires in North Canada right now that are blowing down this way. So it's much hazier than it would normally be this time of year. Um, but uh, this isn't the summit up here is the summit. And if I can just find my way up through this path without tripping and falling, I do like the summit a lot. Um, I've done Probably at least two activations up here, I think. Oh, look at that. Um, the road to the summit, if you're ever doing dog back, the road is um, not a good one if you have a car with low clearance. In fact, I would think I would always use all wheel drive or four wheel drive here. Um, I have been up this road ages ago in a minivan. <laughs> it was pretty dodgy, if I'm being honest. It was not easy to do. Um, mainly for clearance issues. Uh, it's a Forest Service road. When you've got bad weather, it can really affect the... Uh, I don't know, just how ruddy the road can get. It can really affect all of that and make it difficult. This right here is the true summit, right where this firing is. I want to set up under these trees here. I don't have my hat with me today. Again, I'm just on a little trip right now. I'm planning to do this. So I've got my, that's all I got my pack. In there I've got my KX2. I'd actually plan to use my KX1, but, and I want to use my KX1, but, I also want to try the higher bands. Since this is a soda activation, I'd like to do 17 meters and maybe 15 meters, and I can't do that with the KX1. So I'm gonna use my KX2 today, and hopefully the battery's got enough charge in it. Uh, let's take a look around first. I do have some uh, insect repellent on because it is uh, prime time for things like ticks like deer ticks and things like that. But just look, it's so beautiful up here. Just look at that. It's amazing. It's amazing the views you get here. Again, I'm not wearing my best shoes for this, but look at that. That is, that is the back of Table Rock Mountain right there. And the one next to it is Hawksbill. I actually want to activate both of those summits this uh, year, um, like probably in the fall, or maybe a little bit late summer. I think I may get together with my buddy Brooks, um, KO4QCC, who has been wanting to do a summit activation. I think I want to get together with him and do those because he doesn't live too far away from here. Um, so, ah, this is just such a nice place.
I hear a woodpecker over there. Very slow one. Don't forget to smell the coffee um, <laughs> when you're out in a place like this. Uh, sit back and enjoy it a little bit. Enjoy your activations by just taking in uh, some of the beauty here. This is one of those spots. Really is. Ah, oh, it's just beautiful. I think you can probably see Lake James down that way as well. Yeah. Okay. I better get started. I've got other things to do today, actually, so I don't have a lot of time. I debated if I had enough time to do this activation, and I decided that I do. <laughs> so let's get this thing set up, um, get on the air. I'm going to kind of hide in here a little bit. By the way, if you ever come up here to dog back, I don't think there's any reason you would need to walk to this particular spot. I think you could probably activate anywhere along the road here, and you're very much within the activation zone. There's no way I would do that today. Well, first of all, I like to go to the True Summit when I can, um, but I wouldn't do that today because the road is incredibly dry. We have not had a lot of rains, and man, I tell you what, when you pass by one car, you get just enshrouded in dust <laughs> and stuff from the road, so it's a good reason not to do that. Okay, I see what I'm working with here. Okay, so what I'll do is set up my little chair over in here, maybe like over this way. I'll put my antenna up here in that tree. How can you watch all this? Let's see. I'll, I'll go ahead and show the antenna deployment. I've got extra stuff in my bag this time, actually. Let's see here. Okay. I'm going to use this Tuften uh, 9 to 1 random wire. I've had lots of luck with it. Love it. Sorry, this is the stuff for my camera, which I pulled out a little earlier. Uh, let's grab my throw line and let's see yeah i will just do it from this angle here how's that if you're new to my videos i don't edit them so you're just going to see what you're seeing here um, in real time but i would tell you that if you don't want to see all this you can always hover your mouse over the timeline and skip directly to the uh, bit of the video you want to go to because i put chapters in my videos um, let's take a look here. I'm quick and make sure you can see stuff. Yeah, it's kind of bright back there, but I think, I think the camera is going to stay. <laughs> I think it's not at too much of an angle. Yeah, should be okay as long as we don't have any winds. I may hit it with the uh, throw line coming down. Who knows? Let's see. It is kind of thick foliage. And you know what? I only have my eight ounce weight with me today. So I got to be a little careful about how I do this. Let's reevaluate this just a little bit. I don't want it to go into anything too thick because the last thing I want to do is get it stuck. Uh, so I really need to aim for like a lonely branch. But I think, uh, I think if I just, maybe I'll keep it a little closer to home and just try to go up right up there and uh, get one of those branches. In that case, I'll set this over here and hopefully you can see some of this i probably won't get this on the first go this is uh, going to be slightly more challenging here but we'll see what we can do no one's watching right <laughs> it's just me and you <laughs> here we go let's see okay this is gonna be tight very tight okay i just want to go up through that Wow, that went way further over than I expected it to. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. And that is I'm going to pull out all of this line. And the reason I'm going to do it is I really like this deployment. It's just I don't want my antenna going up that way. I want it to go straight up here, I think. So I may pull the whole line through. No, actually on second thought, I'm looking at this. So what I do sometimes, people have asked me about this. Do you shoot the line through and then you pull the whole line, you know, like through where you want it to go? Well, you always have that option. And that is an option I could do right now. If you see right here, this is what I always look for. Kind of a straight line going straight up into the tree without hitting too many branches or anything. And that's really nice. 
over back here where it came down, which is a little further than I thought it would. Um, it actually has a fairly straight shot up. So I think I'm going to use that this time. But what I could do is pull this line out, pull all the line until I come to the end of that one, then attach my antenna up to it and go up that way. It just means like a little bit more. It'll maybe take me two times longer to um, pack up the, the uh, throw line later. It's not a big deal. I don't mind doing that at all. And in fact, sometimes I do like to do that if for no other reason than to reverse the throw line and uh, run it from the other end. But I did that recently. Uh, so let's just use what we have here. I think this will work fine. Let's look for any poison ivy because I did see some down by the road. I don't see any up here, though. This isn't as disturbed as the uh, stuff is next to the road. What I'll do is run my feed line out here. And when I pull it up, I think it'll actually be pretty straight. So let's uh, get some of our things together. It's kind of a mess of things now, including my... Um, let's get the throw line out first. Anything else? Our throw line, feed line. And I'll go ahead and kind of put this out. By the way, question I get a lot. This is a, um, this is a, an ABR Industries RG316, 25 foot cable, much longer than I need for this. Um, it has a 331 series, um, uh, chokes on it here in line and i'm often asked where should the choke be should the choke be at the antenna side or should it be at the radio side and i have always stuck with doing the choke at the radio side of things when i have like an infed half wave or something something where i'm using the um shield as a um counterpoise now, I don't know what the logic is behind that. It's just what I've always done. But I actually reached out to my friends on the Ham Radio Workbench crew, which are kind of like my <laughs> like my hive brain. I'm able to go to them and get definitive answers. And I basically learned that the ideal placement may be about halfway down the line uh, if you're doing an in-fed half wave uh, to have this. So if you've got an inline choke that you connect, you could do that. You could just put it halfway between. But if you have one that's already built in, then the better end, the better end is to put it near your radio. Um, but it all depends on the antenna. So things change when you're using a dipole or you're using a different type of antenna, vertical or whatever. It can change, but uh, that is sort of the deal with these, and that's what I'm going to do today. So I'll put this on the radio side and then carefully unfurl this and have it ready for the antenna. You can see I'm not going very quickly here. I'm not in that big of a hurry, but um, let's get this going. Now I'll grab the Tuften. And we'll take this off. Sorry, I know this is like a little noisy. It's kind of funny to hear the train off in the distance, but this is up at a high um, perspective up here. And let's see, this is the counterpoise. And should I do the counterpoise first or the radiator? I'll do the radiator first. No, I'll do the counterpoise first. Um, I don't really care where the counterpoise is heading, to be honest. I'll throw it off in the woods over here. I'll be right back. Okay, now let me bring the camera over here. We'll unfurl this part. Let's see here. And what I'll do is go ahead and attach it. And I'll throw my weight over at the other end of the throw line for good reason. Let's put a little slip knot through here. There are a fair amount of gnats up here this, today, but they're not actually like mosquitoes or anything. Usually when you get up to sort of higher altitudes, you have a little less mosquitoes and things, but you do have like gnats and things like that. They don't bother me too badly sort of grew up with all this stuff. Okay. And we may have visitors up here. I think I heard a car stop. So I may have somebody come up here in a little bit. Probably wondering what this guy's doing. That's perfectly fine. Here we go. Okay. There's that. Let me throw this back in my bag. 
And then I'm gonna raise this up right here. Just taking this line and pulling it. You should be able to see. I'm just gonna look to make sure the radiator wire doesn't, off in the distance, the radiator line doesn't get snagged or tagged, you know, tangled up or anything. Yeah, like it just did. Let's fix that. It's actually not knotted up, it's just kind of tangled a bit. There we go. I should be fine now the rest of the way. Let's go ahead and pull it down more. And now I'll go attach my feed line to that. Because I'm going to have it pull kind of out that way. And then I'll check to make sure my counterpoise is properly uh, deployed. Let's go ahead and pull this a bit. There we go. Okay. Now let's I'm gonna let that sit here and I'm going to check my counterpoise. I kind of raised the counterpoise this time. Now to hold it in the tree, not that we have any crazy winds today or anything like that, I'm just going to use this weight. In fact, hopefully this weight won't be too heavy for it because it's such a very lightweight antenna. There we go, that works just fine. Now it's got to get this jumble of line out of the way. Well, I don't need to worry about it too much to be honest. Because I'm going to set up here, and let me get my chair. Thanks for joining me today, by the way. Someone asked me about this chair. <laughs> this is just a chair I picked up at Aldi one time. Uh, it's kind of a cheap version of the really nice camping chairs. I like it, though, actually. It's worked really nicely. I used it a lot last year in Quebec uh, because this is what I packed in the car to take with me and it works just fine. Not as nice as some of the others, but does the trick. I've lost a couple of the feet on it as they've sunk in the ground. I need to find something to replace the feet. Some of them, some of these parts. You just simply take the top of this and fit it. On here. But if you're looking for one of these, there's about a, there are a million on Amazon and in your local sports goods store, you'll find ones like this. Kind of like the angle. I don't have much of a view here, but you know what? This will be a comfortable operating position and that's kind of more important at this point. Okay, let me just make sure my feed line is how I want it. Bring it around this way. Let's set up everything else. I don't have anything else ready. But, whoops, there you go. Almost lost you there. Okay. Ah, oh, this is nice. This will be perfect. I do have the camera running, don't I? Yes, I do. Good. I have been known to find out that the camera wasn't on. Your first order of business. Put on my specs. And next... Get my knee board. This is made by Joshua at Tufton. It's a board that was originally designed by N0RNM, our friend uh, Carol Ann, who's amazing. And uh, this is just kind of an iteration of that um, board. And uh, I love this thing. And hopefully, I've got some good voltage in my battery. Last time I used the KXT, I wasn't planning to use it today. Last time I used it was in Alabama, I believe. And I'm pretty sure I took the voltage down to where it would only run 5 watts, so it doesn't have a full battery, but I do have other batteries if I have to pick it up. In fact, i got a spare battery right here, so I'm okay on batteries. 
we're going to be fine. Let's get the key out. Now, I did do something different with this. I raised the counterpoise. I have it kind of draped over some stuff. If I have a hard time, I usually just drop the counterpoise on the ground and allow it to match just, the, you know, just couple with the ground. And I didn't do it this time, so if I have any issues tuning, I'll know why. Because that is a little different than the way I normally do it, but I think it'll tune. I think this antenna will work just fine. I'm going to start on the 17 meter band. Now, I don't know what conditions are like today. They're probably, if recent history is an indicator, probably horrible conditions today. Because they've been wretched lately. Boy, you know what? I've got to really get out some stuff. So I know we're at uh, Pisgah National Forest. Which is K4510. This is actually a, a <laughs> I haven't activated Pisgah in a long time, even though it's basically my backyard. Like I can hike to Pisgah National Forest and to Pisgah Game Lands, which we're on right now. I can hike there from my house, but I don't do it very often because I can really only do it in the winter. It is, there is one part I have to really bushwhack to do it. Um, and so I don't do it often. Um, and this is also Dogback Mountain. And the reason why I put the designators up here is sometimes people want them sent. And if they do, I want to be prepared to send them. And let's see, let's go to Soda Goat um, and get the dog back as W4CEM66. W4CEM066. Excellent. And I did announce myself. I have one bar of service. It's possible I could actually. Um, what is this? How many points? Uh, four points. Yeah. Got four points here. Uh, now I need to set up my logs on... And what I'll do is set up my log on hammers for Pisgah National Forest. Because I can convert it over. I just find it so easy to convert over to soda after that. In fact, I think I can just do it through hammers. I still use the same naming convention I used to use uh, for POTA. So K-4510. Uh, dash 202306. And today is the 15th. Getting very dangerously close to my birthday. Uh, save. And now I'll put it in here. K-4510. Yep, Pisgah National Forest, good. CW, we'll start on the 17 meter band. I'm gonna go ahead and put in KX2 in here, and this is so that if I'm switching back and forth with screens, it won't lose any of this information I've already put in here, because sometimes it will do that. And then what I do is go in later and just delete that particular uh, entry. Bands are very quiet, that's a little scary. Okay, I need to go in here and turn on my ATU, because I think I've probably got it off. No, it's on right now. Okay. Let's see what the power level set to. Five watts. Perfect. Okay, let's tune. Okay, why aren't you tuning? You should be tuning. 0855. No, what am I doing? Uh, ATU. <laughs> Not the tune button, the ATU button. There we go. Okay, let me set this up while I'm thinking about it. Make it easier for you to see the screen. Should be able to see it pretty well that way. There we go. That's better. Maybe. No. Uh, it's hard to deal with glare sometimes. This circularly polarized uh, lens really helps, but I can't watch the screen on the video here and keep up with everything at the same time. What did I get? I got a 1.1 to 1. That's perfect. Okay. So what we'll do is start calling CQ here. Let me make sure I get everything set up. Okay. Let's see. 17 meters. CW. And we are 1,700 hours. There we go. Now for kicks, I'm going to see if the soda network spots me automatically. Let's see. And 
and this is where having saved my spot will... Oh, yeah, let's see. I bet you the Poda Network will do it really quickly. Let me go to Soda Goat again. Okay. Soda Goat, spots. refreshing it because I can always just spot myself in fact that's what I'm going to do just to make this quick and easy uh, spot. save so I'm going to be logging on paper and logging on hammers on the side here to S in there, I think. That's also, <laughs> yeah, I heard an S2S in there too. He must get a lot of that. Where someone um, mistakes him for an S to S, but I actually heard an S to S because I know his. It's a big signal.
Okay, I heard it again. Okay. Okay. Got him. Okay, I only need one more for a valid park activation. I've already got the soda activation in the wrap, uh, uh, wrapped up. Because you only need four for soda. Um, what am I going to go to? Okay, I'm going to go up to 15 meters now. Did I send QRL on 17 meters? Surely I did. <clears throat> Sometimes I have like a brain slip and I forget to do that, but it's always by accident. I always worry because 
people are watching me. <laughs> I don't want to set the wrong example because we just want to try to do things the right way, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Here we go. So we'll change this to 15 meters here. I have a hunch that 15 meters will be even less active than 17. I may not go to 20 today. Um, I, I don't have a ton of time, to be honest. And it's a uh, good probably hour and a half to my house yet. Um, so, yeah. Let's see if it spots me automatically. So I'm having it refresh right now. <laughs> my signal's so weak, it's taking it forever to get anything through. Yes, it has me. There we go. Also taking a picture or two here. Whew, I got a little bit of time. I need to remember to take photos, actually, of the views and stuff, because, um, I mean, they're just always so nice. I, I, actually, there's a, a wonderful view, one of my very favorite as well. See there? I just... Seven AQ. Come on, let's get you. Got him. Why did I send that? My, well, that was just so sloppy. <laughs> so sloppy.
Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's so low. Oh my goodness. Okay, I can't hear. The band is tanking on me. I need to clean the contacts on this, I think. I'll do one more CQ and then I need to really leave. Okay, let me take a photo here of my setup again. Here we go. Take a photo of my log. There's not a whole lot to see here, really, <laughs> when you're looking at this. I'll take some photos of the view and everything later, but basically, I had to keep this a little short. I do have to uh, go back. I've got some things to do at the post office before they close. I've got some time before that happens, but I have other errands to run today. I'd half thought about doing a second activation, but the trip up here, <clears throat> up this uh, Forest Service Road, <clears throat> it takes a while. Uh, you can't just speed on this thing, um, else you'll uh, really screw up the alignment on your car because there's some really deep uh, spots on here. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I got to be honest, it's a really lot of fun to drive on this. This is like my, one of my favorite things to do is to drive on sort of backcountry roads. And this one's not that bad. There's, But there are two spots in this. I was noticing, I was going to say you could bring your sedan up this road if it has a little bit of ground clearance. But to be honest with you, there are two spots that I think if the ground is too wet or too dry, you may find it really difficult to manage. 
because right now it's so dry. Um, you know, even with an all-wheel drive, you're finding that you kind of sink in a little bit uh, in some of those soft spots. But uh, stick this in here and put this in here. It's my AX2 antenna that I keep in here. It doesn't need to be in a pack this big. It's just what's in it at the moment. Yes, I throw a lot of things in my pack, but I don't really care. It works, and it works for me, and so that makes me happy. Put this up. I'd like to do more contacts, if I'm being honest. I'd like to go up to 12 and 10 meters, then back down to maybe 30, even 40 meters. I could do that with this antenna for sure. But I just uh, don't have the time today to do that sort of thing. So let's pick up the rest of this antenna. Let's grab the feed line out here. And whoops. Grab the feed line and then sort it out. Antenna did marvelously. So what I do is I just take the feed line and do this. I try to do it very loose. I don't want the antenna to be, or the feed line to be too tight. Uh, so I'm not you know, putting too much strain on it or anything. I kind of keep it kind of loose. But I find it's just so convenient to be able to um, deploy it. When it's in a figure eight uh, configuration that I just, uh, if it shortens its life by two more weeks, I'm fine with that. I don't think it will, actually. I think this RG316 is very robust stuff. It should be fine. Now, I'll undo the knot on this so there's no tension on the throw line as I do the next part. And we'll just set this in my chair. I will grab the antenna. You know, let's... I look very carefully to make sure there are no there are no um, bits of poison ivy on the ground that I'm grabbing when I do all this stuff. Let's see, where is my winder? Get a winder and my shot cord. So I just need to look around for a bit and find my winder. I threw it in my pack kind of quickly, so it'll be in here. Here it is. Yes, that's all camera right here. And the way I do my antenna, I leave everything attached to it and kind of bring this around. I do the radiator first. This one again, I think is 31 feet. Joshua marked it at the end. He custom made it for me, but he'll custom make one of these for you as well. At Toothton. Joshua's an awesome guy. Avid radio operator too. His designs all come from actually playing radio. Doing soda, doing poda. All that good stuff. Here we go. Now undo that. Now we're back here, and I'll do the counterpoise. And I'll just start this way. Do the same thing. So the counterpoise is on one side, the radiator on the other. I assume that's how other people do it too. I wouldn't mix the two, it'd probably make it difficult. You don't actually have to have a counterpoise with this antenna because the um, feed line is your counterpoise too. But I like having a separate counterpoise when I can do it especially with these little in-fed random wires like this. <clears throat> now it's time to bring the um, antenna up. And I'm looking on the ground. I always look on the ground first to see if, it's, if there are a lot of twigs and things that this could catch on. There aren't a whole lot, but I'm still going to pull the line back over here. And we're going to take another look at this view before I go. It's a shame it's so uh, kind of hazy today. <clears throat> Last time I came up here, actually, I operated, I think from this log, um, very conveniently placed log. So here we go. Let's just go ahead and, so now how I do this, if you can see it here, is um, with this two millimeter line, I explained this in the last video. Um, if there are sticks and things, this will grab it because it's just such thin line, it just kind of grabs and it wraps around things and it'll grab sticks and 
kind of knot up a little bit if you're not careful. The way around that is that you want to stretch it out so that when it falls down, it doesn't fall down just, it's not all coming down in one big bunch and then you're pulling from that bunch. That's more likely to pick up things from the ground. If you kind of stretch it out a little bit, you won't have that issue. And then I just start doing my figure eight. That is one thing about the thicker poly line, the yellow stuff that arborists use a lot, that will actually, um, it doesn't catch on as many things. There we go. Now it's about to fall out of the tree about right now, isn't it? Yeah. Do this in one bunch. This line is 50 meters long. I never need that much really in the field. 25 meters is, I find, is the sweet spot for portability. And so my smaller lines are only 25 meters long. This one just happens to be a full length of Marlowe two millimeter Excel line. And then I just put the, put the little weight on here. Again, with the same knot I use on my antenna and just this little simple slip knot thing. I don't know the name of this. Who was it that I saw recently that also uses this knot? Maybe K Michael KB9VBR? Great guy. Um, I think he uses the same one. This is a little messy in here, if I'm being honest. It's because I forgot my tie for my feed line. But I'll fix that when I get home because I'll see that that's a mess and I won't like it. And I'll fix it. Let's get this bug out. What are you? I'll take a bug back with me. I found this little plastic cap on the ground, so I'm going to throw it in here because I don't want to leave trash behind. I hate it when people leave trash. Oh, it's an ant. Let's get him out of here. I got all this extra stuff in here I don't need. Like, um, two speakers. This is because I took this pack on my camping trip uh, to Alabama and I had a whole bunch of extra stuff in it. So there you go. That's done. Take a picture of my pack too so I can remember what pack I used here. I love this GoRuck GR1. I bought this on an in insanely good sale. Um, when GoRuck had stopped making these regularly in the US and they had a big sale and I picked this one up and uh, got a great deal on it. Put up this chair now, <clears throat> which is pretty simple. So again, if you don't like this part, you can always skip over it. Though I'll probably put this all in one chapter called Summary and QRT, <laughs> like I normally do. Oh, I love being up here on the day. This is the thing about doing, I think especially soda, is you're usually in an extraordinary place because you're on a summit and summits are wonderful and it makes you feel like you're really away from stuff. Even though I've heard trains and planes go by, you just feel a little more remote. And I personally love that. I would do a soda activation every single day of the week if I could. They're just a little challenging for me to fit in my schedule. Even this one, which doesn't have a long hike, it doesn't have a hike at all. Um, even this one is, uh, yeah, I gotta set aside a, a fair amount of time to do it. Okay, let's get this put up. Go out here and take one more look at the view, the very hazy view. Uh, you know, we feel pretty lucky here, though, because uh, up in, like, New York and uh, some of the northern states, New England, they've really gotten it bad with the smoke from Canada. I know the Canada's, Canadians feel really bad about it, but it could be anyone. I mean, we're getting more and more forest fires, it seems, all the time, and uh, it does make it... Um, bad but this isn't as bad as it was last week last week it was uh we had a really high nasty um index warning um oh this is nice let's walk back over here one more time <laughs> again i'll attempt not to trip by the way someone asked me again about these sleeves 
I've been wearing in a couple of videos. These came from REI and they, they just protect, I think Jim N4JW uses some of these. They just keep the sun off your arms. I'm a very fair skinned fellow. Um, I take the sun very seriously. And uh, these are incredible. They're, they just make your arms feel so cool. Cooler than they do when you're not wearing them, oddly enough. I thought they would be hot and they're not at all. Here we go. We'll just go out on here. That's a little, that's pretty steep right there, actually. It doesn't look it, but I can tell it. Let's just take this in for a moment. That down there is a Linville Gorge, and I'm really tempted to drive another 20 minutes that way down this Forest Service Road, and there's just a stunning, stunning view there, but I don't have time to do it today. Uh, it'll add too much time to my schedule, so instead, what you can do is, if I can remember to do this, I'll link to a video up here where I actually go to that spot and... Um, show you what the view's like. It's just amazing. And it was on a prettier day than this because I think it was in the early, like maybe very early spring. So there, I don't think there were a lot of leaves on the trees. Maybe I can't remember, but it was a very clear day. Uh, today, again, normally this would be crystal clear, but it's just kind of hazy, unfortunately, because of the smoke. But I don't, it doesn't feel as smoky today. I think our uh, air quality is not quite as bad as it was last week. Well, anyway, I should uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm just going to grab my pack, take a couple photos, and head on my way. I've got a couple more soda, or not soda, but poda activations planned this week, hopefully. And uh, I hope to uh, work you park to park or summit to summit or something out there. And as always, thank you so much for your support. I really mean this. Um, thank you for your support on Patreon and through the Coffee Fund. I uh, I don't really monetize my sites heavily. I don't even turn on monetization in YouTube. Uh, so um, your support means I can do more of these things, which I enjoy doing. So it's kind of feeding my passion for doing this. This is a labor of love. I love doing it and uh, don't ever want to stop. Uh, uh, this is good radiotherapy. Um, and I think if you go out, uh, don't worry about too much what your setup looks like, how your antennas are deployed, how good your CW is, how good your SSB is. It doesn't matter. The important part is just to get out there and have a good time. So I would encourage you to do that. Also, be kind to one another. All we've got on this whole planet is each other. So let's make the best of it, okay? <laughs> Take care. Have a wonderful week, and until next time, seven threes.